Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC, an introductory course on point set topology part 2. So, as promised, today we shall construct the ordinals. In this section, we shall construct the ordinals and study some of the topological properties. First of all, we have to make a definition two well ordered sets x i less than equal to i i equal to 1 and 2 are said to be equivalent if there is a bijection f from x 1 to x 2 set theoretic function which preserves the order. What is the meaning of that? a 1 less than equal to b a less than equal to b through this one first relation should imply f a is less than equal to b is a second relation this is another one f a is less than equal to f b so it is order preserving which you have used earlier right there must be an order preserving by ejection obviously the inverse will be also order preserving an equivalence class of a well ordered set is called an ordinal. You see, you, you take the class, the collection of all well ordered sets, that is not a set. However, we can define the equivalence relation by this process. No, nobody stops further. Then you can verify that this is reflexive. No symmetry and transitive, right? So you can look at equivalence class. This word class is very important now here. This class itself is not a set. Okay, that class is called a an ordinal. Okay. So in what follows, we are going to construct a set of representatives for a class hmm, of ordinals not all ordinals but a large number of ordinals okay so uh, we will construct that which itself has a well order one set of representatives and that will be a set okay so this is the whole idea now, that will be a sufficiently large number of ordinals Okay, and that itself, that set of collection itself will be allowed. Mm -hmm. The construction of this ordinal space. Of course, when you say when there is well order, then we can take the topology also, then we can say ordinal space. Okay, the following construction works well with any uncountable set. Now, you must know that uncountable sets exist. So, that part is elementary or whatever you know uh, set theory of cardinals that part I am assuming that you know it or I will pretend that you know it that is all ok. So, I am not going to teach you the theory of cardinals here so be sure of that. So, indeed this is not the correct thing to do in the logical sequence but since you are familiar with natural numbers in whatever quote unquote whatever way you know you can take the power set of the natural numbers and call it as x that will do our job of understanding what are ordinals to begin with ok uh, strictly speaking you should not do that even n will be constructed out of this this thing so all that you have to know somehow that there is a uncountable set ok now, so fix an uncountable set x, start with a well order. So, this is Zermelo's uh, theorem that we have proved. Okay. Every set can be well order. Okay. Start with a well order next. Then you add one more point. So, once again I denote it by x infinity, x star equal to x disjoint in x infinity and extend the order on a order on x to x star by declaring that all the elements of x 
or less than or equal to this infinity. They will be strictly less than because they are different from infinity. Okay, that will be automatically a well order and a larger one. Okay, clearly x star is also well order. That's what I we have seen this uh, extension. In fact, below and above also we, we have already done that and we have used that one. Now, let us put s equal to all points of x star such that l x is uncountable. Remember what is L x? It's a left trace. Take all those for which L x is uncountable. Then S is non-empty. How do you prove that S is non-empty? Well, you can take infinity prime here. X equal to infinity prime here. Then what is L x? L x is precisely x. And we, we have started the x is uncountable. So therefore, this S contains infinity prime, so it is non-empty. That is the role of infinity prime here. If we, if I don't put this one, I will be hard put to prove why this is non-empty. In fact, <laughs> it may not be true. All. <laughs> okay, so that that trick is there. Just put one extra thing, then you have got a <laughs> non-empty set. You you are you, you sure? Okay, therefore, once it is non-empty, you can take infimum of S belonging to X star because X star is well ordered. Take the least element, okay, and call that as omega, large omega. Okay, so this this makes sense because because uh, it's non-empty, right? That's all. So this omega will be automatically a member of this one, so it is less than equal to infinity prime. We do not know whether this omega is less than infinity prime or for that matter is equal to infinity prime. So this depends upon the x itself, but we are not bothered about it. Okay, We have started with any uncountable set, therefore we do not know what it is. If you take natural numbers and power set, then maybe you can say that this has to be actually infinity. That is a different aspect. All right. So we don't we don't bother. This is this is an element of this x star. That's all we know. Also, now let zero denote the least element of x star. Okay. I, this time I am bold enough to use zero itself. I better use zero hat or zero prime. But that is too much of work. Whenever it is needed later on, I will do that. Right now, let us just have this zero. Zero be the least element of x star. Okay, always least element exists anyway because they will this well ordered. We then take the order topology, open intervals constituting a base as as we have seen earlier on zero o zero close and omega open. As well as zero closed, omega closed. So both of them are subsets of now x star. Okay, and they are themselves well ordered. So you can take this uh, uh, um, topology, order topology, on both zero omega open and zero omega closed also. Okay, clearly this this capital omega will be in the closure of that. That much is clear. Apart from the properties we have listed above under total order, okay, except for one thing well order we uh, we did that, but uh, other things were general total order, they are all valid here also. Now we will have more interesting uh, properties of this space, this omega zero omega. Okay. So brief basic properties of this ordinal topology. Here we are not, I told you, I am not interested in teaching you cardinality theory. I, uh, I hope you know. Also. So we assume that you are familiar with this. So start with omega, the least element of, of the set, set of all x such that the cardinality of this left ray L x is not finite. For example, if I take 0, L x is empty. 
if i take one successor successor of zero immediate successor of zero then it will have only one element and so on right so that is where the actually piano axiom start if you if you have studied it otherwise you can you know surmise here itself so cardinality of lx is not finite you take all that set and take the least element okay the least element is also an element of this set all right so this this uh, check uh, it denotes a cardinality then for every x inside zero omega that means what x is less than omega right or omega is the least element less than omega it's not so it must be the cardinality of the left ray zero to x zero to open x is finite we add one more point it's also finite okay it follows that if you take this check as a function from zero omega this interval to the natural number namely cardinality is now finite finite number it's a natural number okay take anything here it will at least have the zero right lx will have at least zero so it is non empty so natural number will be positive so it's all 1 uh, 2 3 and so on you get so you get a function here is an order preserving by ejection you see it is an order preserving by ejection here we have the the order that is whatever we have started with here we are pretend we know the order of natural number with this order okay both of them are totally ordered sets if you add both of them are now well ordered sets also this is a order preserving by ejection okay so in our definition this equivalence class will itself denote an ordinal and that ordinal will be omega itself that is the whole idea here okay indeed if you do not know what n n is then zero omega as above you can think of that as n okay and then construct the the algebra out of that by using the ordinal the the successor theory that is not i am not going to do that so here are few terms i want to call, recall every member of zero omega zero close omega open is called a finite ordinal okay omega is called the first limit ordinal there are other limit ordinals obviously okay there are many more this is called first limit ordinal this is some name you can say things which are not finite among us them omega is the least one that's what what you are is the first one okay so you can say not finite not finite ordinal omega is the least one so that is called the first limit ordinal now cardinality of zero omega is that of set of natural number because there is a bijection like that clearly elements of x elements x of zero omega close can be broadly classified by the cardinality of lx okay how many elements are there before that look at the cardinality that is the meaning how many means okay so it may be finite it may be countably infinite like a natural number zero omega or it may be uncountable i don't want to go on further classifying these what kind of count countability is there that is a you know that is for purely uh, further logic uh, which we, which we are not interested in right in this space okay we are only interested in only this broad classification all elements x less than omega are finite omega is uncountable and all other elements are countably infinite all finite elements bigger than 0 are immediate successor of the previous element omega is not an immediate successor 
So all these things, elementary things I am telling you. Note that there is a finer classification of ordinals and a very vast literature on them. Okay, you can study them elsewhere. We are not going to that. So elements of zero omega clause which are not immediate successors are called limit ordinals. I am just, I am just uh, repeating this one. Here we only defined first limit ordinal, but all of them which are not immediate successor are called limit ordinals. Okay. There are of course limit uh, immediate successor for every element. So omega is not an immediate successor. Omega plus 1 is there. That will be immediate successor. Omega plus 1 plus 1 will be there and so on. Right. So again there will be another one which is not a immediate successor and then again after that only immediate successor will be there and so on. This is a wonderful uh, space, okay, never ending. So that is why we have put this capital omega here. So that is the end, this is the maximum element amongst all of them. There are several equivalent as well as slightly variant definitions of limit ordinals different names are also there one of which we have chosen can be justified partially as follows why limit ordinal is just ordinary name okay so why so i am going to tell you that take any element in the open interval zero omega suppose it's not a successor anyway zero is not a successor anyway we don't know that omega is we will prove that one soon huh immediate successor. Then there exists a strictly monotonically increasing sequence Xn, strictly monotonically increasing very important Xn which converges to X. Every immediate successor has this property. Every uh, sorry, every every element which is not an immediate successor has this property. Because it is a limit in this sense, we are calling it limit ordinals that is the justification. Soon we will see that that is not a very good justification either. Okay, first enumerate the countable set Lx, y1, y2 and so on. A countable set means just it can be enumerated, it can be put in the 1-1 one -one correspondence with natural numbers. Okay, but these y1, y2s are not in the order in which, you know, there is an order in Lx already we have chosen that order we do not know, they, they, this may not be the order, okay. that does not matter, just take a, just an enumeration. So, start with x naught equal to 0, I am constructing this sequence now, start with x naught equal to 0, you can start with no problem. Having chosen x n, I want to define x n plus 1 inductively, okay. so how do I do that, once x n is there, look at a equal to maximum of x n and y n plus 1 here in this list, go up to y n plus 1, okay. take the maximum of them. Then clearly this a okay, is still less than x because all these l x are less than x okay. and this x is not equal to a plus 1. Right, because x is not a immediate successor. So if you even add one more, it is you, you are not hitting uh, uh, x. So therefore, we can choose x n plus one such that which is a successor for x n, such that you not know, which is which is big, bigger than x n, such that this x n is less than x n plus one, and y n is also less than x n plus one, which means I am choosing something bigger than A, may bigger than both of them, okay. That is all, that will be less than, still less than X. So, what is this? This is maximum of these two. So, I have given you what is Xn plus 1 here, okay. So, why I can just do one more, one more and so on because X is, X is never reached, right. I can take one more, take X naught and 1, 2, 3 and so on. But you will never know whether you will uh, uh, reach x. If you look at this list and 
I am going to exhaust this list by this method because once I am sure x naught, I am not interested in y one. I will go to y two. Bigger the bigger of the two, I will take. Then having chosen something, I will go to uh, not y three, y four. I will go to the something which is bigger than that one. You see, maximum of the two. So I will go to some y. So this way, I will be keeping on exhausting elements of L x. So that is the whole idea. That will imply that x tends to x. So here is a caution: do not be carried away by the above theorem. Omega is a limit ordinal, but is not a limit of any sequence in zero omega. The capital omega is not a successor. Yet there is no sequence which converges to uh, this omega. The sequence being inside zero omega. Of course, if you put omega, 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 that will converge. Okay, so we shall soon see why this is true. Observe that omega is a limit of the net. If you think of this zero omega as the domain of a net, because it's a directed set, right? This is totally ordered set anyway, right? So zero omega as the domain of a net. What is a net? Just the inclusion map. Take this net inside zero omega clause. Then this omega will be a, obviously a limit point of this. It's a limit of this. So, in this one single uh, uh, paragraph, I have both justified as well as you know <laughs> cautioned you also. So, I am giving you another justification for. Calling this one as limit ordinal. This time I can't take a sequence, but I can take a net. That net has this as a limit. All right. It is easy to see that the order topology on zero omega is discrete. It is just like natural numbers. We have already seen that, right? So order topology there is just discrete. However. If you include omega, it is not discrete. If you include omega, something nice can be seen here. For singleton omega is not open. Okay, discrete means this must be open, no? So to see that singleton omega, you have to write it as maybe intersection of two uh, left ray, one left ray and right ray. Right? That is the only way you can say this thing is open. So you cannot do that, but this one is a G delta set. So it is a countable intersection of open sets. Okay. What are they? Start with any n. Go to omega closed. That is an open subset in zero omega. As n. Keeps increasing intersection over all n. You will be left with only singleton omega. Okay. Indeed, there is another way of looking at it. Zero omega. There is a order reversing homeomorphism zero omega to the space one by n, n belonging to natural number, include with zero. So send each x to one by n, where n is. Its cardinality of L x. Then this omega itself we send it to zero. So that will be a continuous function. That will be a bijection. It is a order reversing homeomorphism. And you can take this. This also is the order set. Okay, order topology. Then you will have this. Okay, zero is a limit point. So that is the way you have to think of this one. This omega is a limit point of zero omega, open. A subset A of zero capital omega open is bounded in zero omega. Bounded in zero omega is very important here because everything is bounded in zero omega. <laughs> If you include omega, uh, you know, included. Okay. This is bounded above if and only if 
it is countable. Is bounded below is obvious. So uh, we are only interested in bounded means bounded above. Okay, everything is bounded uh, below in a well order set. All right. So if and only if it is countable, only countable sets and all countable subsets are bounded inside zero omega itself. So this is the crucial thing. I said, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, slowly we are building it up. So why? So in particular, if this, this is the case, then it happens that every compact subset of zero omega is countable. Because compact subsets we have seen has to be bounded. That we have seen last time. Okay, so bounded subsets are countable. Is what we are we have to prove. Of course. Every subset A is bounded below, so we are only interested in things which are bounded, whether it is bounded above or not. So let A be a countable subset of zero omega O of one. To see that it is bounded above, considered as subset of zero omega, it is bounded above, right? What we have to show? Take the smallest bound, namely. The least upper bound and show that it is inside omega open. Okay, that is what we have to show. So to see that it is bounded above, bounded above means inside zero omega. Consider as subset of zero, it is bounded above and hence has a supremum S equal to sup of A. We claim that this S C is less than omega. S C is not omega. Then we are done. Got it? So how do we do that? Okay, look at this set B, union of all the left rays, where X range is over A. So A is some scattered uh, countable set, right? So for each point, you fill up all the things which are below that. So it is like a saturating this set. Everything below. Let them come inside. So that is B. So it is a very, very big set now. Okay. So for all x inside A, you take L x and take the union. Then each L x is countable by the very definition. Okay, of zero omega. Okay, but x itself, A itself is countable. So it is a countable union of countable sets. Therefore, B is countable. Okay, but now if S is this omega, okay, then it follows that B must be the entire zero omega because all of them will be there, right? If S is infimum, take any x that will this will they will satisfy this property. This is less than that one, so B will be the whole of zero omega. But zero omega is uncountable, right? We started with uh, a set X which is uncountable. Then we constructed this omega, so that zero omega is uncountable. In particular, this implies that no sequence in zero omega converges to omega. See, because the supremum will be inside omega. Inside zero omega, sequence means what? Countable set first of all, right? There supremum, supremum will be if at all, uh, if it's increasing, you can take subsequence which is increasing that it will, will be a supremum. So, so zero omega open. Okay, inside that itself it will be the the supremum will be there. So it cannot convert to this uh, omega itself. All right, so this fact is useful. So this is an extra thing I am telling. Already I have proved that if uh, if A is countable, then it is bounded, right? Bounded inside zero omega. Now let's prove the converse. Suppose A is bounded in zero omega. Okay, if X is in zero omega, okay, is an upper bound for A. That means. Bounded means what? Within zero omega must have an upper bound. Then this A 
is contained inside Lx plus 1, right, in the array Lx plus 1, because everything is less than x, because since x plus 1 must be inside 0 omega, because x is inside a omega, okay. But Lx plus 1 is countable, that is definition of you know, 0 omega, right. So, A is countable over. Okay. So, now we come to a little more serious business here. If Xn and Yn are any two interlaced increasing sequences in 0 omega, what is the meaning of interlaced? You take x1, that will be x10 equal to x2 or x1, y1, x, y1 or x2 does not matter, x1 less than equal to y1, x2 will be bigger than y1 and then x2 will be less than equal to y2 and so on. Okay. So, they come interlaced. Interlacing can occur in different ways, slightly different ways of. Okay, this is one. Uh, if if you change the labels there, you will get the same thing. That's all. So I I can define like this. Then they have the same supremum. See, increasing sequences in zero omega, they are countable, so they are bounded. This much we have seen. The supremum is the same. So, this is similar to what happens inside real numbers. So, I will leave it to you. Okay. 0 omega clause is first countable. Now, we are talking about topology now. First countable at all points except omega. So, how do you show that? Say x belongs to 0 omega open. If x is 0, then singleton 0 itself is open, therefore, it is because it is a discrete set, right? Singleton 0 is open, so that itself is a base, so it is a countable base over. Otherwise, look at open integral y to x plus 1, okay, where y is less than x. Look at all this. Now, x is fixed, I am looking at all y less than x, okay, then take interval y to x plus 1. So, it will cover x, these are open intervals, okay, this will form a countable set because you cannot have any more than countable element is y less than x. But this is a local base, every open set must contain one of them, okay. It may contain x plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, so on, but it can up to x plus 1, it has to be there. And below, it may be, you do not know how, how far you have to go. So, you have to keep coming smaller and smaller. So, there is always this. All right. It is a local base at x. See, this x itself may not be a successor. That is why I have to do this trick. If x is successor, it will be like 0, <laughs> okay, lower part you do not have to take, and upper part you can take x plus 1. So, singleton that will be a, uh, open set. So, all success, immediate successors are, uh, the singletons themselves are open. Okay, now, to see that there is no countable local base at omega, see I said except at that point. So, why there is no countable local base at omega? Let us suppose there is one such. Then it follows that there is a countable set U, nay Yn, I can uh, I can denote them by Yn, n inside natural numbers, contains a 0 omega, such that the half closed interval, say Yn to omega closed, because beyond that we do not have anything, this must be a local base each open subset must contain such an open set, this part, these are, uh, so, so these, these themselves must be open, uh, local base. Now, you take supremum of this y n, because countable set now, supremum of this set now, we have seen in phi o that s must be inside 0 omega. Now, if you look at 
द ओपन इंटरवल एस टू ओमेगा नो एलिमेंट विल बी देयर एट ऑल नन ऑफ देम विल बी कंटेन इन साइड दिस वन राइट बिकॉज एस इज सुप्रीम आम सो दिस दिस सबसेट इज नॉट नो दिस सबसेट इज एन ओपन नेबरहुड ऑफ ओमेगा विच डज नॉट कंटेन एनी मेंबर ऑफ व्यू so that's a contradiction so this is smallest one actually is the intersection of all of them when you take supremum you take intersection of y n omega this will be precisely s omega okay so zero omega omega open is not separable this is the next thing first countability we have seen but separability is not possible and hence of course the largest space is also not separable okay because separability is uh, after all hereditary so we shall prove this one is not separable automatically it follows as zero omega cross is not separable okay so why this is true take any countable set what happens you will have supremum right if you take that supremum plus 1 that will be still inside omega so that <laughs> that will not contain any of this uh, uh, it will not be dense at all because so plus one is single ten open so it will not intersect this one at all that's all so this is an easy consequence of that five five is the key here okay bounded subset is countable and uh, if it only lives countable Something is bounded inside zero omega. If it is countable, okay. Well, so let us stop here. Next time we will see some more uh, serious topology of this ordinal. Thank you.